Next question is from Nick Folkman. As a personal trainer, how do you make workouts fun while continuing to stay on track with your program to accomplish your goals? All right, so I, I fell into this trap as an early trainer. Yeah. If you are trying to make your workouts fun for your clients, you are screwed. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can do. <laughs> there's only so yep. there's only so many things you can mix up. And if you plan on training clients consistently for a while, after about a year, you're going to end up, you, you know what you'll end up doing? You'll end up doing this. You'll end up doing like lunge to curl to press to yeah. twist to stand on the ball to weird shit that doesn't do anything because you run out of ideas. Here's how you keep people having fun and engaged. And I think this is one- You have a personality. Thank you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Thank you. I, this is very important for personal trainers. If you want to be successful, and when I say successful, I don't mean just monetarily. I also mean that, but not just that. I mean successful in terms of getting your clients good results. <clears throat> Develop your personal skills. My clients often came to work out with me and they did the same shit. Often. Squats, deadlifts, presses, you know, rows, right? We would do lots of variations of those exercises, but usually the same stuff. Why did they keep coming? They enjoyed being with me. That was one of the main reasons, right? So I made it fun and enjoyable by being personable, by having good conversation, by making them feel welcome. That's what you focus on. Not making the workouts fun and exciting and different because that's a trap, I promise you. Yeah, well, your job as a trainer is to convince them that our goal is, is <clears throat> not to design a fun workout, but an effective workout. So, I mean, if I had a client that was, this is no fun, I'd say, that, well, you know, if you want, I can write a really fun routine, but did you want a routine that's going to get you more results or would you rather have less results and have more fun? Totally up to you. So I'd alternate advance them like that. So if you feel the pressure to make a fun, because at the same day, we're, we're in the, the um, you know, customer service business, yep. right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you are, they are paying for a service. They, they do have the right to say that, hey, Adam, I, I, I want it to be like this, although they're hiring a professional. So I would tell them, I'd just be very direct, say, well, yeah, we could do some really fun games and we could play around for an hour and burn some calories and, you know, we'll build a little bit of muscle along the way. Um, or we could do the things that are most effective and it gets you to your goals faster. It's totally up to you. And I would put it well, right. Well, I think, I think too, that, um, you, you know, initially, I mean, this is something I struggled with too, because I know that, um, that's something you, you want to think about client retention and, and think about what their interests are. Uh, but something to really break up the monotony was just kind of phasing, uh, the workout routine. So you kind of would introduce something new. Uh, so maybe we worked on something very specifically that was different than, than we had been working on uh, to change it up, keep it fresh. It depends on how long I've had the client because we definitely have to establish that foundational baseline uh, that uh, will provide the results. But then we can get creative in learning like a new skill where uh, I'm teaching them, you know, some kind of uh, unconventional technique that, uh, you know, it's hard for them to work on. But meanwhile, we're still maintaining that baseline of strength. And, and focusing on that in our programming. Uh, but still, I, I, I had to learn how to not uh, do the razzle-dazzle, you know, uh, variations of lunges and all that kind of nonsense that's a total trap. No, that's a, that's a really good point, Justin. You actually just reminded me, you just took me back to some of the things that I would do because we, we were all challenged by this, okay? And we were all guilty of falling in the trap of writing fun routines. I guarantee mm -hmm. that all of us went through a phase of being a pretty bad trainer, but good at writing fun ex exercise yeah, routines. New stuff every time. Yeah. And then I think I landed, oh, yeah. then I think when I landed somewhere in the middle, it, is, it was similar to kind of what Justin, I think, is alluding to right now, where I would pick like a something that was challenging. And they were, they were fun. There was ones where I'd, you know, stack plates on their thighs, or I'd make them do like a plank for a long time, or do one of these crazy step up to a balanced toe touch thing. But it would be one thing that we would do like at the end of the workout that I would want them to improve on, right? I'd teach, or I'd teach them something that re required a lot of mobility or strength to do or they've never done before. Right. And then the goal was to get better at that one thing. Right. And I would, at the end of every workout, that was kind of how we finished it off. Like, okay, let's go do your wall sit and let's see if we can increase the time. Or, hey, let's go over and do that balancing thing that I had you doing. So, so they had this cool thing to look forward to at the end of the workout and it was fun and it was challenging. And so 
but it also wasn't dictating what my where the real programming was, right? It was like the icing on the cake type of deal. It was like the real the real cake, the real meat of the the training program was everything I did at the beginning, and then at the very end of the workout, they could have this kind of fun thing to do. Do you remember trainers that worked for you that just never got out of that trap of always trying to make it fun? A, for the a lot of them. And you know, and, yeah. and so here was the experience I had with these trainers is they would always run into the same problems. They would burn clients out or the clients would get injured and they actually would shoot themselves in the foot and would have a high turnover because every time the client showed up, it had to be the funnest workout they ever had. It had to be hyped and excitement. And it's like, there's, that can only last so long. At some point, your client gets burnt out, tired, or just they're Well, sick you get burnt out too as a trainer, yes. right? Because yeah. you're, you're the hype man. You have to like... <laughs> you know, throw all these different variations at them constantly. And it's just, it's one of those things that I mean, you'll get burned out the more clients you get and you're doing this on a day-to-day basis. So you got to be smart about it as it, well. It's also hard to scale your business up like this because you just become somebody who's entertaining somebody all the time and you've already charged that and you're, you don't really get any better at, you know, writing goofy exercises or entertaining anymore. Where the money is at as a trainer is being the best at what you do, is the best at getting results. When That's you it. when you build the reputation in the gym yep. as the guy or girl who gets all the clients the results or that everybody wants to come to because they know their shit. Like that's how you get to a place where you can start to scale your business up and charge for more money. If you're just the person who is teaching them fun exercises and making them laugh and have a good time, like, okay, you might, you might do all right for a little while. It's going to have a real hard time charging more money for that.